Hi there, you are listening to a Living Album Podcast with Molly Gazay. We have a lot of really great um, filmmakers on this month, guys, to review the song of the month, Manic. Um, and if you haven't heard Manic, please go check it out. It is on Spotify and YouTube. Roxana Lewis is going to be reviewing it for this month. And man, she has some great stuff that she talks about for it. I'm really excited to share with you the movie she directed called Mandy's Voice. It is an incredible story, and I don't want to give too much away right now because Roxana is going to do a much better job talking about it than I will. But stick around. I cannot wait for you to hear about it. Um, it's got a great story. It's got a great message. And if you really like what you're hearing on a Living Album podcast, or if you want to hear more about a specific topic in the creative field, let me know. Write a comment. I would love to hear about it. Okay, now without further ado, let's get to the episode. I am so happy to have you on here, Roxana. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Man, I feel like we've been trying to plan this out for like a few months now and <laughs> the stars have aligned. <laughs> I know it's crazy. It's crazy. Life is good. You had traveling. I think you might have shot a commercial. You had a little traveling going on and some uh, yeah. cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I um, I had a callback for a commercial, um, and so it was really fun. It was really, really fun, um, and yeah, I did shoot a commercial, um, and so hopefully it'll be out sometime this year for an indie startup. Yeah, it was wonderful. So thank you for rescheduling. <laughs> Absolutely, my pleasure. Are you kidding? Of course, oh, it was so fun, <laughs> and yeah, and so we met. Um, actually, we've never actually met in real life. No, not yet. Um, not yeah. yet. <laughs> but, but we've met through uh, decision makers, right? Yep. Uh, with Mara. And, um, I, you know, I was actually, I think, in her one of her very early baby uh, classes. <laughs> there were uh, there were only a couple of us in there. And um, so it was really exciting to go through the generations, I guess I'll call it. I don't really know. Um, of, of creatives. And so I'm... Your body of work is pretty damn amazing. I mean, you're like um, in the best way possible. Uh, just so all over the place is actually a compliment. And I think one of the things that I'm most excited about aside, because when I heard your music, I mean, I understood that you were a filmmaker, but when I listened to your music, I was I didn't want any associations with anything that you've done because I was like, is it going to even speak to me? And mm -hmm. then when I later found out like your world of circus arts and everything, I was like, oh, my God, she's a badass. <laughs> she's got all these parts that she's bringing in and it just makes it makes everything richer. And then I, you know, now I'm going to like just gush, gush for a little bit. But when I was checking out your website and stuff, I was like, oh, my God, your reels are really beautiful. You're like, I really love your acting. You're really like so centered and truthful. I was like, oh yeah, you actually, this is cheesy, but you actually brought cheer, tears to my eyes <laughs> in one of the one of the scenes you did with a, a young person. And I was like, oh, she got him. She, <laughs> she brought him in. <laughs> oh, that so, is so sweet. <laughs> so I'm um, back to Mara in Decision Makers. I mean, I just think that's, it's such an incredibly talented pool of, of creatives. I mean- you know, good stuff, really great stuff. And kudos to the, to the, to the fairy godmother of, of bringing us all together and making a lot happen. Oh yeah. No, Mara and Decision Makers. So for those of you who don't know, Decision Makers is a group that our friend Mara McCann started um, mm -hmm. to help creatives with more of the business aspect of like filmmaking, creating that. But it also like really goes into, um, it can also really help actors. And I think she focuses mostly on LinkedIn and like connect connection with people, um, which mm -hmm. I have said on this podcast before, but that was like the last half of my 2023 was very much about like all these signs coming to me about connecting. And I was like, Oh, I think I need to connect in 2024. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, decision makers is a wonderful group. Mara McCann is a wonderful human being. She's also a Capricorn. Um, <laughs> Happy birthday cool. Capricorns. Happy birthday Capricorns. Yeah. Uh, and um and yeah, so she's just incredible. And that's how I met Roxana and your body of work. If we're going to do the, the gushing thing. Oh my gosh. Like you have done 
so much. And like, and again, also so much in a great way. Like I watched a beautiful clip of, um, of, uh, it was a performance that, that happened with people with disabilities, um, like physical disabilities and this beautiful dancing that occurred with all these incredible people. Did you choreograph that or also perform? I did. I I think what you might've seen is a piece called dream body, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And that was performed and created for Infinity Dance Theater in New York City. And Kitty Lunn, who is an uh, artistic director and just an amazing, amazing woman in, a, in and of her own right. She was an actress on uh, soap operas and um, danced professionally as a ballerina, had an accident, became paralyzed, and uh, is, a, is a wheelchair user. And she brought me in, commissioned me as a choreographer uh, it was a really, this was years and years and years ago when, when there was no social media, no nothing. And we, um, we performed all over the United States and toured and performed Lincoln Center Outdoors, Kennedy Center and in, in Europe. And, um, it was a really incredible life-changing experience because I, I was terrified of, um, I didn't understand when she was like, you know, will you, will you make a dance for me will you she she actually met me as a choreographer and at the time I was an actress so I was no I'm in a play I'm not going to do it I'm retired I'm you know 26 (laughs) and um she said I I don't care you know I want you to dance in this and I I was like well what do you want to do because I was like how do I make with complete ignorance you know how do I make someone in a wheelchair dance and uh I was very afraid and felt kind of unequipped like I, I I didn't I I was just a choreographer, like I'm making dances. And she said, Roxana, I want you to, she'd seen other work that I'd done and she was adju- she adjudicated uh, for a show that I had a piece that was in. So she knew my work and she said, I want you, I want you to give me everything that would terrify me and things I've never done before. And I thought, okay, we're going into the canons. This is my zone. I can do this. She, her mind is in the right place, like for us to take chances together. So we created this piece. Um, it's three women and it, I didn't know anything about the chakra systems whatsoever. It's a, it's a piece in seven movements and essentially we travel through the chakra system and, and it's called dream body because of this, um, the, the ideal of like, what is it to have a dream body and to have toured with her and lived with her and, and, and love her and to understand the world that she lived in and the bias and the, the prejudice and just the daily grind of what it, what it took to, to accomplish the incredible things that she continues to accomplish in her life right now. And, um, so I, I really honestly wanted to do the piece nude. I was like, you know what? She was like, what are we going to do about the costumes, Roxanne? And I was like, hmm. (laughs) Guilty Jones just did this piece nude and it was like pretty wild. And I was like, well, it'd be super cool. And I was like, she's like, you are not not dancing nude. I said, well, then we're going to be in like nude. If people are going to stare because they are going to stare at you, you're in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Let's give them something to stare at. And so we had a lot of fun. And um, I, I mean, I love her. I love the other dancer, Sonia Periton, who is extraordinary, extraordinary, extraordinary. And um, yeah, and they, they uh, Infinity Dance Theater uh, rebooted the piece and performed it again, I don't know, like 10 years later, 15 years later uh, at... Um, Oh, uh, I'll have to think of the name. I'm sorry. It's skipping my mind all of a sudden. That's okay. But uh, yeah, it was super cool. Super cool. Oh, what an amazing thing to do. Thank like, And that and uh, that is going to be something that we're going to talk about later because you have, as a filmmaker, now created... I mean, and I watched a couple of your short films. They're just incredible. Um, mm-hmm. And I absolutely love... Uh, there's one with two men... Uh, in it in a in a bodega <laughs> yeah <laughs> so good um I, the name escapes me right now but like it's I loved shift. it it's called the shift the shift okay great yeah. I was it was super funny it was very it was very entertaining um but yeah we're gonna talk about that later because Mandy's voice is the movie that we're talking about today that you have uh directed yes and um and yeah that also deals with a different scope of something that the world considers different and so i'm really excited to talk to you about that too yeah well all right so first i want to jump in and 
and um, talk about your song Manic? If yes, that's okay. we can, yes, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was introduced to your music through three particular songs, and the question was, which one speaks to you? And it was honestly very hard for me to figure out, oh, okay, where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? So I settled on Manic because with my background as a choreographer, I, um, oh my gosh, I was just, I was struck by how visceral it was for me. Um, and I tend to listen with my eyes closed because I just need to feel and see, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it brings. And also it sounds kind of weird, but I don't like to think as a choreographer. <laughs> like, I really just want to be present. Like, what is this? I'm not trying to see something. I just want to be like, what, what is, what is this? What does it bring to me? Like, just like your question. And, you know, um, I, I, uh, I, I felt it was, Right off the bat, I felt like the, so I have to close my eyes to go back there, <laughs> but right off the bat, like there was this, uh, I was in a room, I was immediately transported inside of a space, like this compression, con I was, I was, con it was very, um, it, it just made me feel very claustrophobic, <laughs> and I love the lyrics. And I was like, okay, I'm hooked. There we are, right <laughs> off the top. And the quality of your voice. And this is that choreographer part of me, because to be very transparent, I mean, my language that I initially started with is the language of the body and movement. And so mm -hmm. it took me a long time to get to the place where I actually cared about words and I actually cared about lyrics. And because most of my life and my training was either about suppressing my own voice and or creating for audiences that could hear and feel information in kind of an ethereal way and mm -hmm. and 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 relate to the music like and 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 the vibration which is like i'm sure you know as a singer that's a, a lot of i mean i'm not even touching on what it means to be a singer i'm not a singer but i i have I danced because I was a professional dancer and I danced because of my love, love, love and connection to music. And so taking that back to your song <laughs> and Manic, I mean, holy cow, I, I, I thought, well, who... Who who doesn't feel a little? That's the part that got me. I feel a little bit manic. I was like, a little bit? Okay, so what are all what are those layers? And I'm just going in and in and in. And um and then the piece was very black and white to me and very film, like old fashioned, beautiful film. I don't have a clue why, but this is, it just, maybe it was a little, the, the music has a little bit of a nostalgic feel to it. And um, visually it took me back in time and, and also in an, a, 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 another time, another space. And then I loved all of a sudden the vibe change it's got like this 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 kind of rhythmic counterplay uh, the gong comes in i think there's some bells and i was like yeah i'm walking into a world now right like the imagination <laughs> is running wild and i'm a little all over the place as you all can tell so i, love I have it. to segue <laughs> and say last week i was at joshua tree for this film i'm gonna shoot and oh, cool. i've written and so there's an airplane hang airplane hangar that i was in and my friend, who's a producer on the film, is a former Cirque performer. And awesome. so she's with me, and she has property out there. And we go to her next door neighbor, who's got this airplane hanger, to see if we could use it. And it reminds me of the set of your film. Your music is what I'm trying to get at. Because you put <laughs> into this airplane hanger, and it's just this... There are giant cards on the wall, and there's aerial equipment, and there's, like, these giant bean bags and bean bags and beds and <laughs> and it's colorful and it's black and white and all the shouts so in other words <laughs> that's like gong your song comes in and it's got this very contemporary feel but then I'm also transported to this at times it goes into first it's first person second person and I'm then I'm all of a sudden in this like wild uh like Alice in Wonderland land um and I think it you know, I felt also like seeing you now knowing that you have, uh, and you, I want to tell you, I saw that before, I, I saw that in my mind before I knew you did circus arts. So I actually don't 
do circus arts. Oh, so I want well, to correct really that. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. We don't need to be embarrassed. I, I have um, my ancestors were in the circus. Girl, um, <laughs> so that, yeah. So I, I wish I had done circus arts, but I, I don't do circus arts. I'm a singer, <laughs> actor, filmmaker, puppeteer, stuff like that. But I don't, I don't actually do like. All the amazing things that people oh, do. <laughs> you know what? I hear that. But here's the thing about that also is that like I come from a family of visual artists and I don't I don't I mean, I've tried to scratch out a couple of things, but there's a sense there's a sense there's a there's a sense of understanding the work and embodying it. And yeah. I can feel that and see it in you and 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 a knowledge of how to use the body. And I see it in your acting okay. and just the also, the other component to that is this willingness to be way outside the box and a willingness to wear the skin you have and, and the heart you have and to put it out front. And even if that means, you know, you're really uncomfortable and other people are really uncomfortable, there's like <laughs> also really there's this beauty inside of that. And whoo, I'm going all over the world with it. I love it. <laughs> I hear that. I heard it in your song is what I'm trying to get at. And and there's even like these little dissonant moments. And um, and then there's this counterpoint with this this drive and the music. But I, look, I'm not a composer, so I'm going to use the wrong words. And I apologize. I love it. You're OK. <laughs> but it's also like the, the music also had a little bit of a dirge to it. There was like a little bit of a heft and a little weightedness. But then your lyric and your timing and your rhythm is... <laughs> this flit, you know, <laughs> up, 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 pushing forward. So, you know, I was captured and I was like, wow, that's a lot of information for me. And then for anybody yeah. who's going to listen to this, <laughs> you know, I but it's that. exciting to me because I, I, I just think, you know, you as a, as a creative, as a writer, as, a, as, as this performer and conceiver and the feeler, um, you have all of that to bring to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just a song. Yeah. For you telling the story of this in your music video, you have all of these parts of you and that you, you get to bring and you know how to bring it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, that's just what came to me the very first time that I listened to it. And um, and then I thought, well, there's so many ways to go with this. You could go really, really contemporary and, and very. Oh, my gosh, it's just infinite ways and I think for me I went between uh quite conventional um scalable to <laughs> almost like punk rocky just chaos but beauty within the chaos oh um, nice yeah so that is what I felt from your song and your voice to me um, what really struck me, and I listened to it several times in a row, and I thought, you know, you've got this beautiful angelic quality in, in my mm -hmm. eyes. You know, I hear this beautiful angelic quality in this refined tones and Sarah mcclellan -y kind of, um, <laughs> you know, beautiful lyric lyrical through lines and the... The moodiness of of like Stevie Nicks. I got to see her in a couple of times and she just kind of <laughs> takes you into these other zones where you're not even present. That's, <laughs> that's so cool and so weird. I've never gotten Stevie Nicks, but I will say I used to have a dream, a recurring dream that mm -hmm. Stevie Nicks was in and mm -hmm. she was like a mother figure. Nice. I don't know why. And mm -hmm. I don't even really remember. I was like so young when I was having this dream. So it was, it was weird that I was even having this dream about Stevie Nicks. But it's so funny that you say that because I, I, be honest, I've never been compared to her, but I absolutely love that. And then, yeah, I was like, oh, I used to have that dream about her all the time. And we were like water nymphs or something. Well, that's what I mean. There's something very otherworldly <laughs> that comes through. And you have this play with your voice that isn't, I'm not saying it sounds like her. I'm just saying that there's yeah. this control. There's a control and deliberate choices that I heard you making mm -hmm. that are um, in that particular song that just for me, were, were, that's what it brought up. Seeing yeah. her on stage, not necessarily listening to her in a recording, but but seeing yeah. and listening simultaneously and understanding the tenderness that she had uh, in, in her performance and her presence in her performance while also then like 
in this other world. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I, I love making sense because uh, like what what <laughs> I, 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 you know it's it's making all the sense. It's funny because I, I, as a as a singer songwriter, I have. Had a really this I love doing this podcast. But there are certain songs that I have a really hard time identifying, and actually listening to you uh, talk about it in this kind of chaotic world, I was like, yeah, that's that was the mood I wanted to go in with to begin with. Was I wanted someone to listen to it and feel what it feels like to feel manic, and so I'm glad that it brought all that up because. <laughs> My favorite, yeah. I'm going to interrupt you real quick. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no please interrupt. Part, <laughs> I just remembered my favorite part was when you do the breath. You had a breath. And I I just thought, oh, that is super cool. And then you go free, you know. Mm -hmm. And so in the through line, visually and all of that, it went from this very contained, constrained, straight jackety. I might have even seen a straight jackety kind of thing or, you know, bound, yeah. binding, binding. Um, and then at the end, it's like this whole, and I was trying to figure out like, what is she thinking of? There's intentionally these three bells or Tibetan bull or gong. I don't know what it is. And then <laughs> comes back at the end again. And I was like, where did she go? I think she meant to go inside in and out of places, you know, and then and then my interpretation of it, it doesn't mean it's right. But I thought, and then there's this third person. There's this, you know, you're always w being watched, this feeling of always watching. And I was like, well, who's that? <laughs> Not that yeah. we ever need to know, right? No. Yeah. I thought that was really cool because at first I related to it as a performer, not not so much now, but well, maybe now just because, but but especially <laughs> when I was really focusing on performing and acting and da 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 da, and I think that's really why I went into directing because I feel like uh, you know I I just really want to soothe that, not quiet yeah. it, not contain it, not squelch it, but just um, reinforce the validity of those feelings and help the process move up and out into from thought into existence. So I thought like, I really enjoyed the ending of it also because it, you, you came around and I exhaled and I went, well, that was a journey. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot we can do with that. Um, so I'll take all those index cards of different colors and different you know, and now we're gonna like get back to center and figure out what that all means I don't know <laughs> I love it I think that's kind of the point of the song because like uh you said suppression of voice at the beginning of this that's yeah. what this is this is this really was a part of my good girl syndrome yes. and that third person is that is anybody who is suppressing voice right yeah. And it could be anybody. So I, I love that you got it that. It is everybody. And it is everybody. And it is, it's also yourself too, or right? Yourself. Yes. You yeah. know, we, I tell this to um, some friends of mine. We have a, a group to talk about some struggles and stuff. And I have been talking to my therapist about it. And it's like, no one can choose your path right now except for you. You have the choice to interact with that or you can not interact with that. And it's such a hard concept because I do feel like we're made to feel like everything outside of us, everything externally is what's right. And there's something wrong with you if that doesn't align. And I was feeling that way when I wrote this song. I was like, I feel a little manic because I feel like I'm supposed to align with all these things that don't align with with my voice and how I actually feel inside. Um, so I'm glad that when you said suppression of voice, I was like, that's exactly what this song is about. Absolutely. And I mean, to me, a little manic was, <laughs> I just think there's humor in that too. It, yes. <laughs> right? It's very, it's a, it's, it's a very little, there's so many fun ways to, to play with that. And I think, um, I think it's important to play with that. I think it yeah. is all those, oh gosh, I think it's, I think it's an every person story. Yeah. And, uh, I love that you put it out there so front and center and own it completely. I think it's really beautiful. Well, I think thank it's really you. and exciting. And I think um, I think that when you make that video, it's going to be fun as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. And you gave me so many wonderful ideas. I'm like, oh, I love all this stuff. So yeah. 
Oh, well, thank you so much for reviewing the song. It was... Oh, my Lord. My I'm, honor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I feel like I probably confused everybody, but I think, I hope that's, maybe that's why I was drawn to the song because yeah. it, it can, it gives people the permission to be exactly where they are and to also release it. And, oh. to re and you know, I, th I was, when I was listening to it, I was like, okay, well, I am sitting at my desk listening to this, where when I listened to this, I was like, clearly you'd sit at your desk and listen to this. But <laughs> also I thought, who else needs to hear this song and where are they? You know, and I, I, I see it in, I see it easily in independent films and certainly not just independent films, but that's the world I'm in right now. I feel like it is, um, I, I don't want to be exclusionary. I don't want to exclude anyone. I, I do feel it's a bit, it's an anthem song. And um, I, I do feel like it is because a woman wrote it and is singing it. It, <laughs> it You know, it's kind of a women's anthem song, <laughs> but it's also, it's also empowering. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, someone Oh, where was I? Oh, it was Spotify. And it was so funny. I was looking at songs the other day. What do I want to listen to? And I I can't remember. It was something kind of ridiculous. Like, it didn't say shitty mood, sad, but it was similar, like, bummed out, sad, miserable songs. And I was like, this is hysterical. Who's going to go to miserable? <laughs> something so descriptive. Yeah. But this song, not fit. it doesn't fit that, but it fits, you know, mad at the world ready to conquer your fear, you know, <laughs> um, um, fuck everyone, live your life. <laughs> yeah. Yay. Yeah. So, I want that Spotify. Fuck it. <laughs> fuck the world. Live your life. That's, that's it. it. I you, right? Yeah. Hell yeah. I want that. Maybe yeah. I'll start one. We'll start one. <laughs> oh, they, they, it's right there. Front and center. Yeah, it, it really is. Well, thank you so much for your review. This is like amazing. And I am so thankful that you spent the time to listen to it and absorb it. And um, thank you. And everyone uh, who is listening, if you want to get a little manic, you can go listen to the song. It'll be on any streaming uh any music streaming service that you use, um, I like to use Spotify and YouTube, but you use whatever you want and it'll be on there. TikTok on the clock, it's moving all the time. Fall down, get up, shove your back into the line. Know your place, silly one. No one's gonna love you if you don't have any fun. Know your place, silly one. No one's gonna keep you if you can't be undone. I feel it all man Speaking of using your voice and suppressing your voice and then not suppressing your voice, let's talk about Mandy's voice, yeah. which is your amazing, wonderful, impactful film that you did um, about a woman who has a, is not able, well, is able to speak, but doesn't speak. Yes. Or, so it is about a, a young, it is about a teenage girl who is nonverbal autistic and she basically tries a controversial therapy or at least what was considered controversial before COVID especially. Oh. And she is able to communicate with her mother for the very first time and tell her that she loves her. And it is based on a documentary and a true story um, by my filmmaking partner, Josh Hansborough, who did a documentary on a very specific person and a very specific um, situation. And then the film is an amalgamation of three or four people who um, who who are inspired, uh, the characters are inspired by some folks who live at, an, at a beautiful community called Peace of Heart Community, which is um, a place for individuals who are non-speaking primarily with autism. And it's about, oh gosh, it's gorgeous. They have, um, they just do a lot of community work. They have this incredible garden. They they do all these beautiful things in the community. And I am just an on I am so honored that they have entrusted us with um taking a little tiny slice of of an imaginary, a fictional character life who's 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 built around two people in particular, but they've been just tremendously supportive of the film. And I'm just very honored to um to be able to to bring this to audiences. Um, I thought that it was gonna be a really short thing. I thought, oh, well, it'll be like a three or four month project. We'll just have 
time with this. And that was um, in 2019 before COVID we started. And during <laughs> COVID, of course, you know, there was this shutdown that happened. And oh gosh, we all just had our own experiences. But I was really thinking about the individuals that who inspired me for this character, Mandy, like how I really wanted to build this character. And we were having a lot of trouble casting. We, we'd put casting calls out in Los Angeles and um, Florida and Atlanta. We hadn't made our way up to New York yet. And I mean, I met amazing actors. And of course, I wanna, I'm want to. i like, I want to work with you. I work with you and you and you and you and you. And But the truth is that I, we just couldn't find, we just couldn't find the right fit. And then things kind of darkened in the world of our shutdown. And I thought, what if, what if we go? And I, I, I had a whole different approach to how I was gonna, how I was gonna work the film. I really wanted to work. I thought, well, let's work with the people that actually inspired me to, that I wanted to fill this character with. Like, they, if I could take their spirit and <laughs> put it inside of somebody. Um, and of course, there was a lot of reasons we couldn't do that. So I said, listen. The world is changing. And I also started thinking about, and thank you for bringing up Dream Buddy. It was a surprise. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You know, I started thinking about all of all of my experiences and especially the work that I'd done as a choreographer um, in working with people who have different lived experiences. And like, why aren't we just casting somebody with autism who can tell this story from their heart and um, automatically uh, the story, I think in independent film often, or at least in my films, whoever is cast has a lot of, they inform the script tremendously. Mm -hmm. The story, I am open to reshaping things in order to get it where it needs to be. And we um, talked about it a lot and it was pretty impossible to think that it could happen because at that point uh, there was no conversation about casting authentically. And I just, I mean, I think during COVID I got like this creative burst and I just really, I don't know what happened. I just got all this courage and I said, you know, fuck it. There's somebody out there who's waiting. There's, I know there's somebody who is screaming at me right now saying, why aren't you calling me? And I was like, I don't know your number. <laughs> I send it for send the telepathy. Said, I'm feeling you. I can feel you. And you know, um, we we already had a couple of the crew members lined up. Our grip was already lined up. It just so happened his son is on the spectrum. And uh, I said, I called and said, Do you know anybody at all who I can audition? And um, it was just an incredibly warm, fantastic response. Uh, but there was a challenge. It was like, I don't know, because that person has to be able to receive direction. I've worked with a lot of actors who were untrained. I've cast off the street. I've cast in grocery stores. So I'm cool with that. And I've done that in my more traditionally cast films. And I think I've always looked for the... Um, I don't know. I like the challenge and I like to me, it's still again, it's like authentic casting in a, in a different way. It's like I'm just looking for people who are real, not that they're going to do the same thing. But it's just how to if I think someone can do it, they really can. not <laughs> It's not because I think it. It's just that I, I see it, you know, and I feel it. Um, and so all of that is to say that um, we were graced to bring in Rachel Barcelona, who is an incredible human being. Um, Please look her up. She's got too many credits for me to spell out here, but I'm so excited for her. She's now with Epic Theater in New York City. She was she went on to go to Juilliard for voice. Um, she was a singer. And, and really what I was looking for was somebody who could, if she happened to be a friend of the crew member. Uh, Keaton, shout out to Keaton um, and 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 Stuart, you know, who were so generous in making that introduction. And um, she and I got to know each other for, I don't know, like we kind of, we kind of courted over Zoom for about six weeks. And she said, you know, Roxana, you're saying all the right things, but are you really going to do what you're saying? And I was like, I threw my hands up in the air and I just started crying. And I was like, I love you. And if, if I'm off track, then you come, you come, you come bring me back. Okay. So you directed and produced Mandy's voice, but you had a writer for this, correct? 
Yes, a wonderful writer named Sharon Y. Cobb. Uh, she came in and wow, she, she had a big job to do <laughs> and was incredibly generous with working very closely with me on, on, on the piece, on the piece, on the characters and um, the evolution of the story. Yeah, because the, the script morphed a lot. The story morphed a lot from where it was before I came on to, well, of course, what people are going to see on the screen. It's like, woo! So, yeah. And then uh, my film partner is Josh Hansborough. He's also the DP and the editor. And... Um, Wow, we just had an incredible team. Something that's really important about our team is that while we were at it, I just decided we were talking about casting. I went a little kooky and I decided to to pretty much, I think it was COVID knowing that people were just hungry to do something. And I I think I, I wanted the challenge and the fun of, I was like, well, let's see how far we can go with this. You know, and basically... I cast truly authentically. Uh, if somebody played the therapist in real life, they are a therapist with people with autism. If the parent support group person, I mean, I just put out a call and people showed up. Uh, the the best friend of the, of the main of the mother, she is a mother of a child with autism, and it turned out that she ran support groups for parents. And I was like, okay, so this is all interesting. So there are phenomenal, like, wow, that was a lot. And I had this extraordinary, I should be naming, um, Rachel uh, Rachel Barcelona plays Mandy. She is incredible. Please look her up. She's um, a remarkable artist. She just won Miss Florida America uh, as the first individual on the spectrum, she identifies oh. as non-binary. She is just a powerhouse of a human being. I love her very much. Karen Silas is an incredible um, seasoned actress. She had her own TV series. Wow. She um, started in theater and uh, she's the mother of two. Um, we have um, Crystal Thompson, who plays the therapist. We have Amy and her Amy Nielsen and her son uh, uh, Barkley. I'm like, oh, I'm like, which is the character's name? So it's been a little. <laughs> um, who who are those are those are the the key characters, and then there's some others in there. But um, and then our crew. We had this incredible crew, and we had people uh, of, uh, with. Uh, autism on the spy, uh, on the on the crew as well, and to include our um, producing team. So it was very important to me. That's why the script changed a lot. It was very important to me to make sure that I mean, honestly, everybody wanted to be there, and that that people really wanted to tell this story about a fictional character. And something that's so valuable about this process is that. I think with anything in life, everyone has an opinion, a way, a method, uh, a lifestyle, um, and different things that work for that individual. And um, in our case, telling this story about one person who is nonverbal and on the spectrum and her journey, um, people from all all walks of life came with an open heart and said, let's all tell this story, even though that's not exactly my story, or we might have approached that differently. Um, it was just an incredibly supportive, beautiful, beautiful environment to work in. And I'm really grateful for all of it. I really am. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, you know, when I have a friend, her name is Lauren McCann. She was making films just right before the pandemic. And mm -hmm. one of the things that she learned also to echo what you're saying is like, she was a first time filmmaker. And she said it was really having the people around her mm -hmm. who well, a wanted to be there, B yeah. were really good at their jobs. Yeah. And that's what really makes um, a production work. Yeah. Like it's the symbiotic family Definitely. that comes together to create something that they all believe in. That's right. That's right. And we also had a beautiful person, Allie Cloversettle, who came in with us as a casting director and she was brand new in her career. And she just was like fire. She was mm -hmm. like, we're going to find them. And you were, yes, I believe <laughs> it. we're going to go out there and find it. And her enthusiasm and um, dedication just 
really meant the world, really meant the world to the production. And Monique Madrid, or uh, another producer, she just was solid the entire <laughs> long path because the the, the, the the film actually, we shot part of it in 2021 and part of it in 2022 and finished post in 2023. Gosh. So it was frustrating <laughs> and challenging to keep up the mo momentum, the motivation, the spirits. I'm sure that every creative person out there knows that. And sometimes we feel like, oh, I'm, I mean, I don't want to use the word. So failure, you know, look, art takes time. It's life. It just does. And we get really impatient. I also have to say, I'm going back, I'm going to do a shout out. My one of the ADs, I had two ADs, uh, Justin, Justin um, Mann and Ithiel Israel were ADs on the different shoots. And Justin Mann has a film called Awake that just won 48 hours globally. Woo -woo! Ooh, yeah. Ooh, we yeah. had like a really awesome team of just very generous, creative, talented people who switched roles, you know, who, who just came in and, and made it work together. So. Yeah. And that's what you need on a production. You need people like I, I did a, a horror film uh, back in horror comedy film in 2023. It was my first feature. And when uh, uh, this company for this commercial approached me, they're like, Hey, we're in the Silicon Valley, but we're looking for people out in New York. Do you have any suggestions? I was like, yeah, I got like all these people yeah. that I just worked on this movie with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, they're amazing. They're great at their job. They are super sweet and fun and talented and amazing to work with. So like what, like just having a good name is better than riches kind of a situation yeah. where mm -hmm. it's like having a good name will bring you riches. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so that's wonderful. And so in terms of like distribution, so like everything's done and you've started to uh, get to that point where, all right, now we, we got to get eyeballs on this project. Yeah. How has that process been for you um, in terms with Mandy's voice and even with other things that you've done that you have found valuable um, that other filmmakers or other people who are trying to get people to see their work? Um, I, I think I'm actually going to even, I, I the, the first thing I can do to back that up and give my two cents is don't apologize for your work, right? Like we hear stories about yeah. people that we respect, we admire, we're in awe of, you know, we're curious about like all this, we have this, this huge <laughs> array of feelings. And the first thing I wanted to say is like, just do your own thing. Like make peace with the fact that you do what you do really, really fucking well. And only you do it in the way that you do it. And don't ever forget that. And that can take you a really, really, really long way. You haven't missed a boat. It's not out to sea. There are more. And I think that's number one, is to, to work to get whatever your project is to the very, very, very highest quality that that project can be. I mean, I have to be transparent and say, of course, you know, I see things that I would love to be have differently in this film. But we did absolutely everything we could within our means, within, I mean, we stretched it beyond, you know? And what, what it did actually, um, in terms of distribution, oh, it's a big one. For me, um, this film was was created to open doors and to bring eyes to an audience for to bring an audience to a subject um there are other people who can speak to this much more eloquently than I can I I'm really only friends and have loved ones so I speak from a very personal experience and believe me mine is not the most important um from my experience, individuals who are non-speaking or non-verbal and on the spectrum are also the most overlooked, who are the least, people don't even understand what that means. They don't understand the nuances and we couldn't even fully capture it in our film. I mean, it was just impossible. And so I think um, our goal for this film was to, or at least it became, to start conversations and, and then what was interesting about it is that the film world shifted also television shifted also and 
I was actually afraid that we had kind of missed the boat. <laughs> like nobody's going to be interested in this. I mean, who's in, it's, it's, it's been a challenging film to place in festivals. I, I've gotten, we've gotten a lot of incredible feedback. It has gotten into great festivals, but almost more importantly, um, it's developing projects that are becoming offshoots. So our intention with this film in all transparency is to, once it's, going to be done with its festival run. I'm not going to stretch that out. We're going to like let it be what it's going to be. And then we just want to put it out in the world. Because realistically, um, the idea is to empower people to take chances, to follow their bliss, and to make work and to validate it. So I think what I can talk about a little bit more comfortably is in terms of funding your film, being able to um, to really find the intuitively find where your film connects with audiences and then oh gosh I mean we just banged on doors we just I just called people I called organizations I I you know I found a 30 second pitch for the film which once I got it down worked really well and um and tell people what you need. Ask them, invite them to come join you and in a very honest way. Um, for this film, we haven't, we haven't actually moved to distribution because we would have to renegotiate some contracts. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be actually in some ways, we'll see what happens. If people are interested, that's what we'll do. Um, but I, I think that, um, the most important thing that I can say in a healthy way is to not apologize for your film, to not apologize for your, yourself and what you're creating um, or contributing to the project uh, and how you're, depending on, on what your role might be, how you're putting it out into the world. Just, you know, humility is a beautiful thing. Grace is a beautiful thing. Stay honest with that and, and stay strong. Stay strong. I love that. Yeah, that's been a very interesting, I feel like the message for 2024 for me has been what you just spoke about. And not to bring it back to me, but just in a general sense, we all have these things that come come to us, right, throughout <clears throat> time. And one of the things is being authentically yourself without stepping over or, or, you know, stepping on other people, but also like understanding that there is a reason why you are doing the thing you're doing. And it's speaking to you and you, if you don't get it out, then you're doing not only yourself a disservice, but you're doing the world a disservice because Mandy's voice, like if you had squashed that thought or that, you know, just said, no, I can't do this. And it was more of like a, a you know, a self-defeating thing. We wouldn't have this beautiful piece that is a gate opener for so many people to be heard. Yeah. And, you know, for a movie about, yeah. And this is where I get really woo wooey. I mean, for me, this is about, like, I'd like to, I mean, not all my projects need to be like this, but I'd like there to be peace on earth. <laughs> and what yeah. does that mean? It means, it means I, I need to be comfortable with the people in my community. I need to know who's in my community. I need to know who's in the schools. I, you know, we, we need to start getting used to, to people just literally our differences and, yeah. and live with that and let it be a good thing. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that is, that is an underlying theme of, of Mandy's voice. And also that, like you said, you know, we, we all feel like at some point in our life, we're unheard, we're overlooked. And I, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say it's all equal because it's not. Um, I'm just no. saying we, we all go through tough moments. Yeah. It's a, it's a universal feeling on the, like on a, on a wide range of feeling unheard. And yeah. that could be any, like being, a relationship. yeah, <laughs> appearance. yeah. I mean, any, anybody can feel unheard. It's just where, where it, where it lies on that, on that, uh, in that range. Right. Like, so it's universal in the way that Mandy's voice can speak to so many people. And also it can help people understand something that they don't understand, which can feel scary. Right. Like if we don't understand someone it, or something, there's an automatic fear, um, which is scientific, you know, like, um, right. so it's wonderful to have these types of things. And I think that's why art is so important and acting is so important because a, this is my, this is my why. It. 
<laughs> By the yeah. way, yeah, this is my why. To make yeah. people feel less alone and yeah. to understand a story that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. Because that creates empathy. Yes, exactly. That's so, right. And, and Mandy's voice does such a beautiful job of that. I was in tears at the end. I'm like getting goosebumps even thinking about it. But I was in tears at the end watching her, you know, with her mom and like her mom getting to hear her, you know, speak and seeing all the, the beautiful Mother's Day stuff. And it was just like, oh, well, that's true. Thank you. I mean, nobody knows what we're talking about, but I need to say this. Those words were real words, tight by a real person. So none of that was fabricated. Oh. And, I, you know, I felt like, oh, God, this might be saccharine. But you know what? It's real. Yeah, it's real. I don't know that the audience will know that, but that's what drew me to it. Yeah. You know, I could feel it. I, no, I, I didn't need to know it in order to feel it. You know what I mean? Like that, that is one of our six, like seventh sense is like that feeling, or I don't know if it's one of the six, I actually don't know. Girl, I'm all about that seventh. <laughs> Give me an eight. Yeah. Give me an eight. <laughs> Sense eight. Go watch Sense eight. <laughs> I love that show. Uh, but it is, it's, it is, it is a part of that, that essence of humanity that we can feel it, you know? So it's wonderful. And thank you. So um, what I love to do, I love to close out each episode with a question um, about music. So if you are going through a really bad day or you're feeling really uplifted or you're feeling melancholy, is there a song that fits a feeling when you're feeling or, or a lyric that makes you go, oh, that feels good. Or, oh man, I really need that song when I'm feeling down. Oh boy. Do you have a song you want to dance to all the time? Like what oh is- Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I have, I mean, honestly, I have such a weird relationship with music as a dancer and a choreographer. Yeah. It's like blood to me. <laughs> and my daughter plays violin and I took her to school today and we we're, I mean, this is, I, I mean, this is the first thing that comes to my mind. It's, I'm not this square. <laughs> no, it's okay. We, we were listening to, you know, she listens to to her music. And so we were listening to Vivaldi this morning and I hadn't listened to it in years and years. And I, I said to her, you know, I remember listening to this. She goes, I said, you know, I've listened to, she asked me, have you heard this before? And I was like, no, I listen to Vivaldi a lot, a lot. And she goes, actually, and she goes, oh, because of me? <laughs> no, <laughs> <little> one. <laughs> it was really sweet. I said, Super no, true. actually, I used to, when I was in college, I used to get up and I'd put it on and it was, it was the thing that got me into neutral and that also made, I don't know how to say this. It just got my energy going. Cause I knew I was going to at 9am have to start dancing every day. Yeah. Um, so I don't know that that is a, an accurate present answer for you, but that it is. is. I thought of this morning as, yeah. as that happened. And I thought, wow, how few people listen to classical music, including me. I don't even know if I would still be listening if it weren't for the fact that I have this little musician in my house. So yeah, yeah. no, that is any answer is the right answer. Um, <laughs> you could have said my dog barking and I would have been like, yeah, tell me why. <laughs> um, yeah, there's no wrong answer. It, that's amazing. And yeah, classical music is beautiful. I listen to it actually a lot when I'm um, writing, like depending on what kind of script I'm writing, I will sit there and I will listen to like dark alchemy yeah. when I'm writing like a darker thing. And then I'll listen to like upbeat. And I love, um, I love, uh, every every holiday season, the Nutcracker. I like. I have to listen to that soundtrack like three times. I can't do it without the choreography. So I'm like, ah. <laughs> I, I, I get it. <laughs> well, thank you uh, so much for being oh on a living God. album. Oh, you're amazing! It's so much fun you're talking amazing. with you. Edit Same. everything. <laughs> All right. Well, keep creating, lady. Keep doing your thing. You do, and like keep in touch. Let's talk about music videos. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and yeah. And is there any place that anyone can watch Mandy's voice or like the trailer or anything? Oh, well, thank you. We are still in festivals, so it's not yet public. Um, but we have a website, Mandy's Voice, www. Oh, I don't know why that's important. Mandy's <laughs> Voice, M-A-N-D-Y-S, V-O-I-C-E. Dot com, Mandy's voice dot com, and you are welcome to visit me. My website is Roxana Lewis dot com, R O X A N N A L E W I S, and I would love to say hi. 
Yeah, I'm going to have that all in the bio description. So it's perfect. <laughs> all right, thank all right. you so much. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Talk to you. I see a little man in-